All right, Keitan Tadek. That would be a cool mashup video, actually. Trying to call blunders. I hope my opponents would not be offended, but I would like to look back at my clips and <laughs> see the times that I've done that. RPG, if RPG is in the chat, I did put one clip up on YouTube where I made a uh, nice pre-move against RPG. This move is not good against the classical, by the way. I don't know why I played it. Uh, ugh, this is already not a great position. I actually had this from the... Uh, black side in one of my most recent videos illegal use of the jedi mind trick yes okay let's take you get this kind of ugly structure but black has to be a little careful because there's a possible attack here I remember when you pre-moved to capture when they blundered and didn't see it. It was nasty. I think that was against RPG. Yeah. Let's take. All right. So if he has to play something like F6, I can try to open this up, guys. He's got to be careful. Take. If you're going to go for a structure like I went for, you better know what you're doing. This looks dangerous for him. I mean, rook over. He's going to try to trade queens. Can almost take here. Oh, this looks so juicy tactically. Let's give a check, I guess. So, so juicy tactically. Let's go here. Thank you, ADZZ, for the prime. Here? Oh, man. Man, man, man. I'm going to try this, guys. I don't know if this works. It very well may not work, but let's give it a shot. Check. How do I mate him now? Maybe I should have checked with the queen instead. I'm not sure. Let's go here. G4 is the threat. G4 followed by queen here. Probably should play e4, therefore. What a weird position. He has to give up his queen now. Okay, I'm winning. Now I'm going to try to get my, my rook over to the h3 square. This will be the idea. He's like, why are you playing e4? He's going to take my pawn on c2, and then I get to lift the rook. And now he's going to realize, oh, that's your idea, and he's going to check me. Because that's his only defense. And I'm not quite sure what to do, but I'm going to go over here. And then I'm going to try to maybe go after his bishop. I don't know. It's still a weird position. He has to play that. Yep. Okay, take. Weird stuff here. Oh, thank you. Let's go here. Here. I'm trying to put him in like a weird six one. This looks like a study position or something. Look at this position. Oh. <laughs> This dude has a sense of humor. He didn't have to do that. He could have played bishop f6 or bishop h8. How do I win if he does that? Like, how do I mate him easily? That looks like some sort of study. Let's think about that. If he plays bishop f6, let's say. Check. Bishop g7. Let's say... I don't know, queen f7, he has to go back to h8. You know what I'd probably do? I'd probably maneuver my king all the way around. I'd probably maneuver my king like all the way here and then play king f8 at the moment when his bishop's on h8 and he'll be purely in Suxuang because he can't move his king or his pawns. That's the plan. Ah, oh, yeah, queen on d8 is also Suxuang. Good call, Aw awkward turtle. Did I make queen h3? I probably did. Where was that? 
I mean, I can't play it here, and then he took my rook, so he's going to escape. Is it coming up? Oh, queen h2. Yeah, yeah, I had mate right here. That's right. I was kind of enamored by his king being blocked in there. <laughs> that would have been cool if he had moved his bishop. I don't know what I would have done with 13 seconds left. All right, that was a fun game. I wonder if knight g5 is good. Let's check. Yeah, e5 is a strong move. Could play queen c8. I should play knight e4 right away. That makes sense because that applies pressure here and maybe there's some knight g5 business. Oh, rook takes f6. I briefly thought about that, but that's kind of a sick move. Take. I think my analysis stopped right around here and I decided I didn't have enough. But the engine says, go ahead and do this and then check. King f7 runs into this, followed by mate on the next move. Yeah, this is... This is nice. And then I'm going to pick up the rook in the corner with check. Let's see what it thinks about knight g5. <laughs> this is black shouldn't take it. Play h5 instead. The leaf blowers are back. Yeah. Oh, queen takes e5. Wasn't even looking at that move. Queen takes e5, king g8. What then? Oh, rook d8. Oh. Rook d8. Take and then what? Check on e6 and like check the king out. Oh, wow. Rook d8. Queen takes d8. Check e6, king g7, rook f7 check, king h6, and then queen h3 mate. Oh, that's a nice line. This is like straight out of a puzzle book. Check. Check. If he goes back here, it'll be mate. And this is mate. Using all the pieces. That's, that's awesome. Computer just seized it instantly. Queen takes e5. This would make for a good uh, calculation puzzle. Like, you could give this to a student right here. Say here, white's deciding whether to play knight g5. If black takes, f takes g5, how should the game go? And I would bet a lot of people are going to look at this and this, and probably not so many look at queen takes e5. Because I was playing knight g5 to, to get at the f7 square, less so the, e, the e5 square. But that's pretty pretty instructive. So what about what I did? Rook f7 check, king here. It is a little hard logistically to mate black here because the queen is eyeing up this square. <laughs> of course it's a draw, according to the... <laughs> like how, this position is just drawn in multiple lines. <laughs> Hi, YouTube. This might make for a good YouTube video. Yeah. A little, uh, a little fins short here. Featuring a sharp game and some cool calculation. Yeah, queen h3. Now, I thought black should try to deflect me somehow. e4 was the move that crossed my mind here. Because with queen queen f3, I'm trying to play g4 followed by queen h3. But uh, g4 makes a lot of sense too. Queen here trying to renew the threat. g5 and black is somehow slithering away here. Getting some room for their king. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so black can defend. G4 looks like a good move. Instead, queen e6, and then I get to play g4. Yeah, and due to this threat, this is really the only way to play. I went e4, which is not a good move, apparently. But I was trying to get the rook over here. And now he checks, which is annoying, because I, in order to escape the checks, I either have to block my rook, or I have to lose the h-pawn. And I decided to lose the h-pawn. Somehow this is now equal according to the engine. But yeah, my opponent did a, a huge favor, did me a huge solid here by hanging their rook coming up. I probably should keep this pawn in hindsight because this pawn's not, not, not all that valuable. I probably should play a4. 
But yeah, fortunately, my opponent played a5. Seems like a correspondence draw. Yeah. Yep. And then I missed mate in one, which if I put this on YouTube, they're going to tell me immediately that I missed. <laughs> Shout out to the YouTubers if this goes on YouTube. Dead man DM, thank you for subbing. No, it's all in good fun. That was a cool game. So thanks to my opponent for that. Yeah, you don't usually want to play bishop e3. If you do, you kind of have to commit here, bishop b5. White's play is predicated on a quick attack, and fortunately I was able to whip that up in the game, e5. Without e5, this wouldn't be looking good for, uh, for white, with black having the two bishops and a much better pawn structure, white having the double isolated pawns. All right, yeah, nice calculation. And if you're a chess teacher out there, you've got some students, some pupils who might be interested in solving a tough position like this, or, you know, they're willing to take on the work, Give them this position, see what they say about knight g5. This queen takes e5, king g8, rook d8 shot is so nice. And if king h6, I suppose we can always pick up the rook in the corner. Engine <laughs> suggests other stuff, rook d5, h4. Yeah, probably this is working pretty well too though, plus four and a half. All right, cool game.